Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to webinar Dealing with the Dutch. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Mona Taufik or Molly from Novik Nest Indonesia as your host for this session. This webinar is presented by the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Singapore, Panaga School Brunei Darussalam, Erasmus Training Center, and also Novik Nest Indonesia. Before we go deep down to this webinar, some information for you. Questions can be asked during the presentation. Our team will help you to answer them. A couple of questions will be picked to be answered live. Make sure your mobile phone is close to you because we have fun quiz with prizes after the presentation. At the end of the event, please have your camera ready because we are going to have a photo shoot. Okay, so that's the information that I have shared for you. Now with, let's do this uh, webinar. As you know, culture and language go hand in hand. So this is a really great way to get introduction to the Netherlands through linguistic and social slide, social side. For today's session, we have two Dutch language experts. First of all, we have a Chris Samson. It's connected from Brunei Darussalam and also Fonts of Van Oosterhout from Indonesia. Hello, hello, good morning to you guys. Good morning, Molly. How are you, Chris? I'm very good, thank you very much. And also, how are you, Fonts? Could you please unmute first? <laughs> Could you please unmute, Fonts? Yes, I, there you go. I'm here, I'm here. Good morning, <laughs> good morning. Good morning from Jakarta. Look yes. at us, look at us, color coordinated with the orange. Oh my God, so fancy this morning. <laughs> this is no coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know um, we are still living in a very challenging time, but again, through the connection, through the internet, we are here virtually to welcome you to the webinar dealing with the Dutch. And Chris, are you ready to do your session for this morning? Absolutely. Thank you okay. so much. Hey, over to you, Chris, and I'm doing the share screen of your uh, presentation. Hold on one moment. There you go. Now you can see your presentation slide, yeah? Yes, there it is. Right. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Molly. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Um, I'm Chris Sampson. Uh, I'm currently working as the Dutch lead at a small international school on the most beautiful island of Southeast Asia. And I know that's very tricky to stay here, but I think it is. Um, in the past 11 years, I've worked at various schools in Asia, as, uh, the, uh, at various Dutch schools, I should say, in Asia as head of school. And the aim of um, our Dutch education is always to ensure that our students can reintegrate into the Dutch educational system smoothly. Now, the key factor to that, as Molly already uh, quite rightly stated, is by learning the language and the culture. Right, Molly, next slide, please. And again, there we go. So if we speak about the Netherlands, we are actually talking about kingdom. Uh, and it's not just one country or mainland Europe, and Fonts will highlight that later. It's four countries, um, one in Europe and three overseas in the Caribbean. Um, the Netherlands have got uh, 12 provinces, there's three special municipalities, and please click Molly. <laughs> there you go. Our capital is Amsterdam, probably well known for its canals and its beautiful architecture and a whole lot of naughtiness. Um, our political capital is The Hague in South Holland, the red bit on the map. Uh, that's where our uh, government sits. And we've got about 17 and a half million inhabitants uh, at the moment. Um, there you go, Molly. Yes, I'm here, Chris. You're wearing orange today. Now you I know, know why. Right? You do know <laughs> why, guys. <laughs> Well, what I know from my read, I think why Netherlands is really, um, I would say, popular with Orange because in the past there is like a royal family with the name of Orange, I would say. It's not just in the past, it's at this very moment. <laughs> the Dutch royal family, 
And the orange um, refers to the, the, the orange, the Dutch are always obsessed events. It refers to the house of Orange Nessa, which is uh, a royal family's uh, house and goes way back. Uh, it's a branch of the German house of Nessa. Now, this house was founded by William I, Wilhelmus, uh, Van Orange Nassau, the father of the fatherlands. Um, in the picture, you see the, the royal family with our king, Willem, Alexander, and in the middle, it's our future queen. Now, the reason I'm actually saying this is because the William, uh, had Wilhelmus, is the name of our national anthem, and it refers to this William the First of Orange. It's an acrostic poem. If you write it down, like if you write his name vertically, each verse starts with a letter of his name. Now, the first sentence is quite interesting because it says, William of Nassau, and this is literally translated, William of Nassau, am I of German blood? The only reason we use, well, we don't really use our anthem in a way, you know, you don't need to show up first thing in the morning if you go to school, put your hand on your heart and sing the anthem. Uh, but we only use it when we play football or on King's Day. Uh, next slide, please. So the German blood, it refers, it goes uh, much further than just the bloodline. It's, um, it goes into languages as well. So all the most northern European languages are of the Germanic language branch. Um, so the Dutch, it evolved from Germanic to West Germanic to Low Franconian, which is Old Dutch, Middle Dutch to Modern Dutch, the Dutch we speak nowadays. Now, why isn't it called Netherlandish, like Indonesian, or it's Bahasa Indonesian? Well, it's the, you know, the, the language of Indonesia or Malay. Why don't we just call it Netherlandish? Well, that's because Middle Dutch, the Middle Dutch name for Dutch was Dietz, and that's translated into Dutch and Deutsch. Very confusing, two different languages. Dutch is Netherlandish, Deutsch is German. So don't get confused. There's some other languages, official languages spoken in uh, the Netherlands, which is Frisian, Neither Saxon and Limburg in the south, and like any other language in the world, there's many dialects. Don't worry about it. Most, and I'm talking like most, 99.9% .9 of the people speak Dutch, the Dutch we speak. Right. Dutch is not just spoken in the Netherlands, Click, please, Molly. There you go. There's a lot of heritage. There's a lot of Dutch heritage scattered around the world. So, after Second World War, after World War II, a lot of people migrated to um, either America, North America, and uh, uh, Australia, New Zealand. So there's still some, some Dutch speakers living in that area. Um, it's also spoken, of, of course, overseas, in the overseas part of the kingdom, but also in south, um, southern, I should say, southern Africa. Um, Afrikaans is very closely related, it's another language very closely related to, uh, to Dutch. So worldwide there's about 24 million Dutch speakers. Right, not to miss in Dutch, get your notebooks out. Um, Molly? Yes, Chris? Make that the cat wise, it's a literally <laughs> literal translation of a saying, what does it mean? Okay, now I'm guessing, yeah? I'm really, really guessing. Would it be pulling around? Mm, yeah, close, close. Very good, very good. Good guess. Okay. You, did you secretly do a language course with forms? Well, I did. 30 minutes <laughs> last, last week. You didn't cover this, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the Dutch language is full of proverbs, of sayings. It's figurative language. So you can't take it literally. Um, and the only way to learn it is just by learning it uh, by heart. Now, another funny thing about the Dutch language is that we use a lot of diminutives. We like to make things small, maybe because it sounds cuter, I don't know. So instead of just saying, let's go and have a beer, we say, come on, let's go and have a little beer. Usually they're not very little. Um, 
or oh, such a sweet child. We say, oh, such a sweet little child. And if you say, I make math and leche, I make a little list. It usually isn't little, it's usually like a three page, you know, begging list or something for a holiday. So diminutives, keep that in mind. Another thing that's typical about the Dutch language is that it's full of lame warden, and that's Dutch for words we've borrowed from other languages, also from Bahasa. So for example, brani and bakaleya and pinter, you probably recognize those very well, Molly. For yeah, sure, yeah. yes. Yeah, they come straight from, from Bahasa. Portemonnaie is French for wallets, we use it. Magazine, computer is all English, we use those as well. Now, now it gets tricky. Molly, can you give me your best? Let me try. There you go. Is it I can speak that already. I know, you're, you're <laughs> such a talent, you're such a talent. It's the G is very common in Dutch. It's a proper Dutch phonics. You need to practice. It's a, it's a throat sound. Um, and, you know, it sounds quite harsh. It sounds like people are either going to spit you in the eye or maybe punch you in the face, neither of which will happen. So, for example, gezellig is a typical Dutch word. There's no translation for it in most languages, not even in English. So gezellig means something like cozy. You know, if you go somewhere and it's got this nice, homey feeling, it's gezellig. Gezelligheid is the noun. A lot of in there. So, if you walk, if I walk around here in Brunei and I say "Salamat pagi," that sounds more that all very cheery and happy. Um, good morning. In Dutch, that would be "Goedemorgen," and again, no one is going to punch you in the face. It's just a way of saying "Good morning" or "Goedemiddag," which is "Good afternoon." Another one: "Hoe gaat het?" Goed. How are you? It's going well. Good. All with that very sharp. Um, and lastly, lekker. Lekker is a word to learn. It actually refers to food. So food is lekker. But nowadays, an activity can be lekker as well. So did you sport lekker? Are you studying lekker? Yeah, so nicely. Like, have you done it? Was it, was it nice? Um, and then one more lekker. The Dutch, in their communication, in their way of talking, in their behavior. The Dutch are lekker direct. They're very direct, which basically is the Dutch say it as it is. So, if you go to your first lesson early morning at a university and one of your Dutch classmates walks upon you and says, Oh my goodness, what happened to you? Didn't you sleep well? You look awful. It's nothing, they don't mean it in a rude way. They just mean to say, Good morning, how are you? But then, you know, in Dutch. Next slide, please. Why learn Dutch? So that this really is the key message of, uh, of, our, of my part of this webinar. So 70.5% of the international students in the Netherlands, they find it really hard to integrate and to connect with their Dutch peers. They are a bit lost or they, they stick to their, you know, their other international um, uh, peers. But it's such a waste, right? Because a lot of those studies, the, the vast majority of the students is Dutch. So so such a shame if you can't relate to them. Then another reason, almost 25% of the international students uh, studying in the Netherlands, they still live there five years after graduation. They found a job, they got hitched to a nice Dutch, you know, tall, two meter tall <laughs> Dutchman. Um, so they, they still live there five years after education. And then, lastly, Dutch is re required at most jobs. Dutch is required as a strong language. You, need, you don't need to speak it fluently, but you need to have a very solid, um, not, um, solid foundation of the Dutch language to get by in any Dutch company. Maybe the business is in English, but anything else, all the backgrounds, you know, all the corridor talks, all the quick, the quick, can you please get me that? It's all in Dutch. So learn the language. And then a very famous quote by a very famous wise man. If you talk to a man in a language he understands, it goes to his hat. If you talk to 
in, in his language that goes to his heart as well. You can't beat that. That's it from me, Molly. Over to you. Lecter, thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And now we are waiting for you, Fons. There you go. Yes. Yes, that's Lecter indeed. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be back. Uh, and uh, now, uh, of course, representing the Erasmus Training Center here in Jakarta, uh, Language uh, ed Education uh, Institute here in Jakarta. Almost 1500 courses uh, on, a, on an annual base uh, for different purposes. Uh, Indonesian going to the Netherlands uh, for work, study, and uh, uh, maybe they fell in love, uh, they want to, to live there. Um, also doing short courses and like uh, Chris is mentioning, um, yeah, Dutch is, is necessary in, in, in a lot of professions as well. Uh, so if you look at nursing, for example, uh, one of the things is very important to learn the language because you can talk to the people. Yes. Um, so sounds of the language, uh, the way of talking, how people are looking at you, and especially the non-verbal communication. Um, with the courtesy of Language One, we prepared a little footage just to for you to get to know a little bit about the sounds and uh, uh, how, how this Dutch language uh, uh, sounds like. Okay, please. Hello, goedemiddag. Hoi. Goedemorgen. In het Nederlands zeg je ja, ja. En in het Nederlands zeg je nee, nee. Dit is heel goed. Ja, dat is slecht. Ik wil het. Ik wil het niet. Ik hou van het. Ik vind dat leuk. Nee, bedankt. Ja, ik snap het. Het is heel warm. Het is koud. Ik moet daarheen. Wat moeten we nou zeggen dan? Vandaag. Gisteren. Gisteren. Altijd. Tot morgen. Goedenavond. Ik begrijp het niet. So, sorry, excuseer mij. Spreekt u Nederlands? Begrijpt u mij? Wie ben jij? Ik ben een toerist. Spreekt u Engels? Wel te rusten. Ik kom uit Holland. Ja? Ja, hoe gaat het met jou? Alsjeblieft. Wat is uw naam? Mijn naam is Anneke. Het is mooi weer. Het weer is niet zo mooi vandaag. Well, so, like, like, like in the footage, you know, uh, um, you, you hear the goede morgen, uh, mijn naam is, uh, but you look also at the mimics of people, huh? and uh, they look straight at you, and uh, uh, this, is, this is just an example of the way of talking in the street, and also a way of talking of, 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 of hearing the Dutch. So we continue now with cultural, social, uh, and society, because going to the Netherlands is also a meeting with the culture. Sometimes people say it's a culture clash, but on the other hand, it's better to be pre prepared than, uh, uh, than you go in blind. So going to the Netherlands is actually uh, uh, going to Europe. Uh, Netherlands is also a gateway to Europe. So the location of, of the Netherlands is, as you might know, in the northwest of Europe. And it's neighboring uh, Germany and Belgium. Um, Molly, this uh, CEST um, and CET, do you know what it is? I know exactly for this one because I think I always mention a few times for the CEST Central European Summertime. Very good. And then the clock goes forward or backwards because we have seas, uh, time zones in, in the Netherlands. So that means that we have a winter time and we have a summertime. So this is the summertime. We are now in the summertime. And the difference between the Netherlands, for example, and Indonesia is five hours. So in October, the winter time goes. Will the clock go backwards or forward from, from, from the Netherlands point of view? This one is a bit tricky, if I may guess, backwards. Very good, okay. very good. 
So that means the time difference between the Indonesia, for example, and the Netherlands will be not five hours, but six hours. That's very important to know. So in, in, in Indonesia, for example, we have a, a wet season and, and, and a dry season. Eh? So those are the two seasons and that's given by monsoon. Okay, back to Europe. Uh, what is this EU? It's an economic union. It is a political union with, with, uh, with, with uh, uh, one government and also a currency. The capital of Europe, for, of the EU, is Brussels in Belgium. So we are also part of the Eurozone. And that means, and that is part of this financial uh, 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 Union, we have one currency. So you go to Europe, in most of the country, 19 out of 27 countries, they pay with the euro. Yeah, so no problems with exchanging uh, 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 currencies. And also, what is very nice and especially nice to tell you, we are also part of the Schengen area. So 26 official Schengen countries out of 27 EU countries, they don't have internal borders. So that's why. For example, the Netherlands could be your gateway to Europe. A lot of students that we talk to, they say, why do you like the Netherlands? Yeah, I, I love the Netherlands, but it's also nice to take the train to Paris or uh, take the car to, to Berlin and, and explore Italy, you know? And uh, that is the, the advantage going to Europe. Okay, next one. So this is uh, what you see now. This is actually uh, the, the, the Schengen, uh, uh, no, this is Eurozone. And the next one, please. Yes, and this is the Schengen area. So in this blue area, you see the countries where you can just go to without internal borders. So which country do, would you like to, to visit, uh, uh, Molly? Well, most of them, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, yes, indeed. Yeah. Can you go to the next one? Oh, what is this? Uh, I always learn something red is something bad. Um, do you have any idea, Molly? What is this? Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry if it's a bit harsh. Uh, do you think it's about COVID spread? You would think so. But actually, this is a map of Europe that indicates the density of the bike lanes. Ah. So it's so we have in the Netherlands 22.8 million bikes. So you see in the Netherlands eh, that, that we are uh, having a lot of bike roads. Eh? Together as, as Dutch, we cycle more than 15 billion kilometers a year. But let's talk about this COVID. What's going on with COVID? Next one. Yes, this is the COVID situation in the Netherlands. Quite important, of course, eh, if you travel to the Netherlands. Eh, uh, I just uh, recently got the message that more than 850 student visas were given by the embassy here. So students are going to the Netherlands. The universities are opening up. Yeah, so you have face-to-face -face education there. So average, you can say 85% uh, is uh, is already covered. Eh? At least they have their first shot. And 77% out of that 85%, they are completely vaccinated. So this is a, quite a good development. And actually today, when I saw the news, 25th of September, we are easing the one and a half meter rule. So you don't have to take that distance of one and a half meter anymore. So we are now opening up also socially. Next one, please. Yes, let's talk about the society, eh? the Dutch society. So when you go to the Netherlands, what can you expect? We are a very modern society. We are a multicultural society. We have over 200 nationalities in the Netherlands. Let's say, you know, 1.8 million uh, people in the Netherlands, they are not even born in the Netherlands. Yeah. So the freedom of speech, equality and social solidarity are very good basic values. And uh, the Netherlands has also the highest uh, English proficiency in the world. Uh, so um, 
Someone is knocking. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so the English, uh, the Netherlands has also highest English proficiency in the world, but they're very direct. They use their English in a Dutch way. Huh? Um, so the Netherlands seem open and informal. It's true, but there are some complex social rules at play. Yes. So flashy, showy behavior is not really liked. You know, Pe Dutch people say just act normal. Huh? Famous Dutch saying is just act normal, that's crazy enough. Next one. So what is typical Dutch? Typical Dutch is of course being on time. Make sure you're on time, always. It's so important. And then if you go to a, to a, a birthday party, um, yeah, then you see something funny because people sit in a circle and everyone is congratulating everyone and and Amoni, when you get a present do you open that here in front of everyone in indonesia or you just put it away put it away when i have time in my private time i open them yes in the netherlands is different they open your present in the presence of everyone so they also see when you buy something really cheap yes and you see directly the the reaction of the birthday boy or girl so that's really uh, uh confronting sometimes um small talk about the weather you saw it also in the footage um so the weather is is is, is a topic of the day everyone is talking about the weather like we talk in indonesia about traffic yeah we call it here machet yeah um and the food um yeah what can i say about the food we are bread eaters so in the morning we eat molly bread in the afternoon we eat molly bread very good in <laughs> in the evening we eat another bread no 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 <laughs> then we actually eat <laughs> something else we are an international uh, uh, we have an international cuisine of course of because we are a multicultural society so you can have whatever you want and uh and even you can buy uh, uh, asian uh, cuisine as well and what do you see here this is prescribed with, with muisjes and uh, this is a traditional food we have some traditional food so we give this when you encounter this in the netherlands that means a boy or a girl has born uh, i see so, so it's not apples. like in a gender relief party yeah? so basically after the baby is born yes after the baby is born, then they give the party and then they serve these kind of snacks. And the blue one is, of course, for the... The boy. And the pink one, you guess. For me. Yes, for you. Okay. <laughs> Next one, please. So, let's give you a few Dutch people. Huh? So, we have here on the left side, we start with Dick Bruna. He is the, the, the inventor of Nainje. Miffy, you all know Miffy. This little rabbit, this cartoon figure. You know, you know Miffy, uh, 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 Molly, or not? Yes, this is quite popular um, in the Netherlands, especially when I went to Amsterdam. Um, I saw this a lot. Okay, very good. So this this second for, for, from from the uh, yeah, you already already pressed the button. This is Rembrandt. Yes, and Rembrandt, yeah. of course, he has this nice. Uh, his famous picture, the Nachtwacht in het Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. The third one, who's that? Anne Frank, of course, very famous uh, because of uh, the, the war history. And also she is a refugee uh, at that time. And uh, we have the Anne Frank Huis, uh, het Achterhuis in Amsterdam. And she's of course famous because she wrote a uh, diary. And uh, and the guy in the middle, who's that? Santa Claus. Yes, yes. We have a, a national uh, celebration of Santa Claus. It's a children's uh, festive uh, party, and it's always on the fifth of uh, December. So Santa Claus is coming with his boat and his piton. Uh, that is the story. He comes from Spain and gives presents to the children. And then this one. The next one, that is? Um, the racer, right? The racer, yes. This is Max Verstappen. He's topping the charts now in the Formula One. So he's, he's now an upcoming star in the Netherlands and actually international. And then we have our queen, 
The Queen name Maxima. is Maxima. Ah, perfect. Maxima Zorogieta. She's married to our king, uh, King William Alexander, and they have a lovely daughters. Uh, you saw it in the beginning of uh, in in the in the presentation of uh, of Chris, and uh, yeah, we are very proud to have her as our queen. Um, and then we have uh, a, a blast from the past. Eh? This is the football player. We are always as Dutch very uh, a football team, a national team, and this is one of the, the, the big stars. He just stopped, and this is from Percy. Okay, next one. So apart from Dutch people, I would like to show you also some sites. So if you move to the left, Amsterdamse Grachten, where do you see that, uh, Molly? Well, if I may guess, is that the one with the windmills? No, those are not the Amsterdamse Grachten. So the Amsterdam Canal, canals, you see, press the button. Yeah, yes, yeah. there, that is Amsterdam. Amsterdam is famous for its canals. So it's, if, if you have a chance to go there, uh, please uh, take a nice tour on the camel, uh, canals. It's very, uh, very nice. Then the Alkmaarse Kaasmark, number two. Where do you see the Kaasmark? The cheese, is that the correct? The cheese, kid you, yeah. Yeah. This is in Alkmaar, this is in North Holland, this is an annual festive uh, 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 setting where uh, they present their cheeses. Dutch eh? is very uh, famous, but also particular about their cheese. Um, and then number three, strand, that means... Hmm, was it the beach one? Very good, very good. This is the beach of Scheveningen. And now I want to challenge you, but not only you, but all of you was now present to pronounce the word that you see in orange now. And I will count down. Yes. And yeah. I will do it first. Scheveningen. Now, here we go. Three, two, one. Everyone. Scheveningen. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Try it again. One, two, three. Scheveningen. Yes, yes, you're natural, you're natural. This is a <laughs> difficult word for a foreigner to pronounce. So the next one is Volendam, Streekdracht. Well, 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 I can tell that this is your another side job, Hans. Is that you? Yeah, that's actually me. I, I see it now. Uh, and this is uh, already an old picture, uh, but uh, that, that, at, this, at that point, we just made a nice picture with uh, some... Uh, uh, um, uh, um, the next one. Which one? That's Kinderdijk, Schaatsen. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Hoge Veluwe, na uh, Nature Park. Yes, we have a lot of nature in the Netherlands. Huh? And in, in the middle of the country, there is this huge park with deer and, and boar. And, and, uh, so it is very nice to relax over there. Yes. Um, and then, of course, the last one is the Kinderdijk Schaatsen. It's very famous. So this is a winter picture. So uh, it was all frozen up and you can do some ice skating with the nice scenery of these windmills. Typical Dutch. Next one, please. Yes, last tips. I go quick because my time is almost up. If you go to the Netherlands to study, be brave and proactive to ask something to your peers and lecturers. Don't wait, just ask. Make lots of friends, learn the language. You need each other also academically. So you do a lot of problem solving education. That means that you are doing projects together and you are marked also as one group. Be on time, yes? I, I, I say it over and over, be on time. Agenda appointments, also very important. Most shops already close at six. Be aware, eh? so if you're late, you miss out. Um, and of course, from A to B, there's a lot of cycling going on, like I said before, but don't forget to lock your bicycle. And remember, there are Asian shops, yes? So don't be afraid, Molly. You can have your Indomie here in the Netherlands. No problem, you can buy it. And of course, register as a student member you get student discounts everywhere. So be aware of that. Okay, that's it for me at this moment, but, aha, um, 
we are going to play a game and you can win fantastic prizes. One of the features here at ATC is that we do uh, pre-academic uh, preparation courses, academic preparation courses. This is the pre-undergrad grad course, one week online course in 2022. You can win tickets, 50% discount, 25% discount and 10% discount. So if you win, you're entitled to, to these vouchers. Yes. All right. I think we have to move to the Kahoot. Game pin. So I just want to mention that um, all the participants need to go to kahoot.it and then put the game pin um, for your phone, yeah? Because you are going to have a chance to get voucher, gift voucher from Erasmus Training Center. Is that correct, funds? Yes, yes. Absolutely. And uh, just in the meantime, I say something about uh, when everyone is, is uh, uh, entering uh, the, the game, uh, this uh, undergrad grad uh, is given in English, uh, two, two very big subjects, one is academic English, uh, so you will learn about research uh, uh, skills and what is also expected uh, in the Netherlands. Then on the other hand, we have the TLC. And TLC, what, what does it mean, Molly? TLC? I don't mean, uh, we have a course that is called, within the undergrad grad uh, course, we have a course called TLC. What is it? Okay, TLC. I remember TLC is about a girl group band in the past, but I think TLC from you, it's more like learning center or learning something. Yeah, most people think actually, Molly, that this is about tender love and care. And uh, TLC, in our perspective, it is teaching and learning culture in the Netherlands. So we have an international group of lecturers. They are actually coming from the Netherlands and teach you at this course. So they can really give you the tips and tricks. What is expected from the lecturers in the Netherlands? So actually, this prize is actually quite amazing because it gives you really good preparation and, uh, and make sure that you land soft in your academic uh, uh, journey there. Okay. Right. We have a, quite a few of participants and also with the Let's director. start. Let's start this quiz. Let's start. Dealing with the Dutch 2021. I'm excited. Me too. How many cases should you give when greeting someone in the Netherlands? We one, two, three, or four. What is in the Netherlands? Um, what do you think, Molly? I'm guessing. Ah. Now, <laughs> this is. What are you hoping for? Three. Three. Yeah. Very good. Three kisses. All right. Um, oh, Nia is stopping the scoreboard. Next one, please. Who is this famous man who invented the microscope? Is it Anton van Leeuwen, Peter Jan Bolten, Rembrandt van... No, we know him. Rembrandt, we know him. Or Johannes Calvijn. Rembrandt is the painter, man. It is Anton van Leeuwenhoek, 17 out of, wow. They know it, they know oh. it. <laughs> so we have a new leader here. Yep. All right, next one. Let's move. How do the Dutch traditionally remember each other's birthdays? How do you remember? Do you write it somewhere? person hangs out the Dutch flag, so it's not even knock on the door. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we just don't. Yes, it's on a calendar in a bathroom. So if you enter a bathroom <laughs> somewhere, that's really typical in this that, house, okay? you see a calendar with all the birthday dates there. <laughs> all right. Okay. This is going quite well. For how do you pronounce that? Use? Please. Okay, what happens on the first Monday of every month at 12 p.m.? This is 
something that I even remember as a child growing up in the Netherlands. What was this thing on the first Monday of every month? Is that the time that everyone watches the news? This that is the is mandor- cool. mandatory uh, emergency drill, uh, so there's a big alarm going. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, good to know. We have new number one font. Oh, Delia. Wow. Well, let's see what happens next. Um, what is a coffee shop? I don't know what is a coffee shop in the Netherlands. It's a bit tricky. It's, it's a tricky, tricky one, everyone knows, but not really talking about it. Uh, they say, I read it somewhere. And, oh, a place to buy weed. All right. Once okay. again, it's just part of the lifestyle, I would say, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it's open there. Yeah, so you, you can just do it, uh, buy it. A burglar, this is an interesting one. A burglar breaks into your house. What can you not do on the third floor? What so emphasis on not? What can you not do on the third floor? Whoever breaks into your house. I think I would always call the police. <laughs> oh, lock him up in the toilet. But I guess then the burglar, the, he, he also knows uh, <laughs> all the birthdays. <laughs> We have oh, a new leader. List. Oh my God! Don't worry. We still have like three questions. Yeah. Yes, three questions. Oh, this is tricky one. You ask this person how they are doing. They will answer that they are doing fine and ask how are you. Or they ask back how are you. Is that common? No. Tricky one. Well, you have 50 percent, of course. Actually, it's false. They will, they will say, "I'm okay," and then it's not with the weather. You know, it's not like, "How do you? Do? How do you do?" Like yeah. in, in English, so it's yeah. not the standard thing. Yeah, of course yeah. they ask you <laughs> back, but it's not standard. Yeah. All right, next one. Yako, still topping. Another true or false? Nearly half of the Netherlands is under sea level. That's a lot. But there you go. Yes, very good, everyone. We have smart viewers here. Um, Oh, yeah, is still number quick. one, and then number we still one. have two questions. Two questions. Despite of the love, uh, the love that people have for bikes, there are more people than bikes in the Netherlands. If you paid attention earlier, then you have the answer. There are more bikes. Uh, there are more people than bikes in the Netherlands. Don't spill the answer. <laughs> Yes, false. There are more because bikes. there are more bikes, right? Than people. Yes, yes. Twenty-two point eight and seventeen and a half million people. You're right. Yes. Okay. Next one. This is. This is just. How many flowers does the Netherlands export every year? A lot of things can happen now. It's quite a lot. Lots of tulips. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's amazing. It's actually two billion. The, the winners. Who are the number okay. three? Data, third place. Well done. Use. Yes. is number two and position number one is the echo congratulations wow congratulations to you 
Okay, thank you so much, Fons. Um, it's really, really fun to be with you um, this morning. And also for all the winners, yeah. For uh, Let me try to uh, recap. Yako, Elise, and also Agatha, could you please send the message, the private message to me? Uh, my account is um, a Nufik Nesa. So if you see the Nufik Nesa Indonesia account or in the chat box, please send the direct message straight away. Okay, great. Fonts and also Chris, I think I'm going to, um, what is it, to invite Chris again. Um, come out, join with, um, join us with uh, on the stage because I have question. As I promised that we are going to pick some question and then answer it live. Are you ready, Chris? I am, depending on the question, of course. Yes, for both of you. Um, so what are the important festivals in the Netherlands and when? Are you talking Ladies first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because, are you talking festivals or is it like public holidays? Uh, both, I would say. Yeah. Both. Both. So public holidays, yeah. most of the Christian holidays. So we've got Christmas and the benefit, like a, a, a little bonus in the Netherlands, is that we've added an extra day to those Christmas days. So you get a second Christmas day as well. And there's Easter, you get a second Easter day as well. So that's good, two days off. So most Christian holidays are days off. Um, King's Day is a national holiday. Uh, and that's about it, right, folks? Fest uh, class. Okay. Yeah, but that's not a national holiday. You don't no, get but for children it is. <laughs> it's, kids do, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, for festivals, depending on what you want, there's a lot of musical festivals. So there's a big festival called Pink Pop in the south of Holland. There's another big festival, Lowlands festival really nice musical festivals there and there's a lot of arty kind of festivals for example in the north of holland there's the the island track the badezee with the wadden islands small islands in the north of the netherlands and they host a massive multiple day art festival with music and um uh music but also like a theater um and another one i really i personally really like is the parade the parade that's a traveling festival that goes to all four big cities well big the netherlands big cities so amsterdam rotterdam the hague and utrecht and it's a multiple day festival um with you know art and silent disco and, and music food a lot of food yeah so there's basically all year round, there are festivals, but mainly in summer. Yeah. yeah so some festivals are really um, uh, 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 bound to areas. Eh? And for example, if you have the carnival, eh, oh, the yeah. carnival is, is a, lot, a lot of people uh, celebrate carnival in the south eh, uh, of the Netherlands, but not so much in the north. And uh, so that's also a nice festival just to experience, I guess. Uh, so when you are studying in Amsterdam or in Utrecht or in Groningen, you know, go south and, and see what's happening, you know, just experience it and, and just keep track of everything culturally, what is happening in the Netherlands. And uh, there's so much to do. Okay. Cool. And another thing only to add yes. is they like, the Dutch like to treasure, they treasure their museums and art. Uh, so we've got museum night as well, when you can access the museums, all museums in the Netherlands for free. Um, which is very popular. There's always a lot of exhibitions and um, street culture. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, our duration is quite, um, you know, like really, really tight. But uh, as a bonus, because we do have a lot of, um, what is it, a lot of um, questions, but I'm going to try to uh, give a one question. So. For Ambassador Sally, could you please copy the 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 questions that you are going to um, to be answered? Which one? Okay, this is the question. Wow. Yeah, sometimes I am wondering how to apply for the. I can't read it, but I'm trying. Open bar for four card or office chip card to get public transportation when we just step down in the Netherlands. Can I, and also, can I find the place to get our cash in it easily? Okay. Between Chris or Fonts, I think I'm going to 
give it to fans because you are more social in the Netherlands. So could you please answer it? Well, um, I just came back and I just survived the quarantine here. So uh, <laughs> so when I went back to the Netherlands, uh, uh, most of the time I drive a car, but uh, uh, I have to take the bus and the train too. So then I need an OV chip card. So you can just buy buy a, an empty, uh, a nameless card uh, at uh, 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 at the Albert Heijn, at a big grocery store or at a book store, you can buy the car. It's like around seven euros. And then there are these, yeah, these uh, at, at the grocery stores, there there are supermarkets, there are the, these yellow poles and you stick it in and then you charge it up and then uh, you use it in the bus so uh, or in the train. So it, it's quite, quite handy, you know, you just have a car. And then you you just uh, uh, charge it uh, at, at well these places are everywhere actually, uh, but you have to do shopping anyway. So in a, in, in the supermarket you, you can just uh, uh, charge it, and then uh, that's it. So it's quite easy. Cool. Okay. Hopefully it's answered the questions. Well, again, thank you so much, Fun and also Chris, uh, Chris from Brunei, uh, Fun in Jakarta. Thank God for the connection, really. <laughs> <laughs> it worked okay. out. I Very know. Good. Before we end uh, our uh, special webinar, I would like to say thank you for the participants. But please don't go because we are going to have a um, photo session. Yeah, as we uh, mentioned before, could you please turn on your camera or camera ready to all the participants day uh, that are here? Yeah. We are waiting because this is a really special uh, moment. Um, my colleagues, Daphne, also here from Singapore. Uh, there you go. Hi, Daphne. Please, 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 could you please turn on your camera because we are going to have a, a photo session. Hold on one second. Okay. Okay, I think this is my mistake as well uh, because some of the participants uh, the the future it's not um for the you know for the camera on that's fine but if you can once again we invite you to open your camera your camera ready and then um we have a photo session yes we can see that everyone is awake on saturday morning good morning everyone hi <laughs> It doesn't matter if you haven't had a shower, uh, that's okay. Yes, we are going to open the camera. My colleague is helping to open the camera and I can tell that some of the camera is open. Okay, I am going to take picture on the first page. We have three pages, okay? Put your best a smile. One, two, three. Okay, page number two. There you go. Some of you are ready. Okay, so this is the page number two. One, two, three. And the very last page. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to take a picture for page number three. One, two, three. Thank you so much. There you go. Everything is complete. So again, um, we are going to meet again virtually this afternoon at 4 p.m. Singapore time um, at the webinar Living and Studying in the Netherlands. We have 21 Dutch University ready to welcome you. Okay, so you can discuss and also ask any questions about studying in the Netherlands. Once again, thank you so much. My name is Molly. Stay well and see you this afternoon. Bye, guys.